It's very appropriate for the celebration of Easter, the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to observe the Lord's Supper. Normally we would do this in church collectively together as a family of faith, but we're not able to do that because of the present times. So we're going to do it through video, and I invite you to join me. You may not have grape juice at your house, so you can substitute some other liquid uh, that you may want to use, even water, because Jesus said he would cause rivers of living water to flow out of us when we believe in him. Uh, the meaning will still be the same and God will understand if we're limited by the coronavirus. But I refer to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23. The Apostle Paul is writing this to the Christians in Corinth, and he said, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We take the bread to remind us that Jesus allowed his body to be broken on the cross for our benefit and salvation. And we take the cup to remind us that it was Jesus' blood shed on that cross that completely washes us clean of our sin and offers eternal forgiveness so that we can spend forever in heaven with the Lord Jesus. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And there is no better expression of that, no better example of that than Easter. Just a few moments ago, we were in the sanctuary in relative darkness, and we shared the bread and the cup together to remind us that Jesus Christ really did die on the cross. And that death, which was intended by the world to be the death of Christianity, turned out to be life, beautiful life, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so to symbolize that, you folks have put together this cross, an ugly cross in the beginning because it signifies the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ, but a beautiful cross because through his resurrection, it shows that we have eternal life in Jesus Christ. It's a time to celebrate, folks, a time to laugh and to dance and to sing, and it's a glorious Easter Sunday to celebrate. So join me as we pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, how marvelous to be out in your sunshine as we celebrate the shining of your Son upon our lives through his death and his resurrection. Oh, Lord, we do not deserve to have eternal life because Jesus gave us that life through his death. We don't merit it at all, but in your grace you offered it to us so that we could experience the beauty of eternal life in your presence and how thankful we are for that. Lord, as we go from this day forward, may we always remember to be Easter people, realizing that Jesus paid the ultimate price for our salvation, but understanding and celebrating the salvation through the beauty of eternal life that begins even now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.